Let's get into indexes now. Let's kind of shift from statistics. We'll come back and talk a little bit more about updating and identifying statistics a little bit later. But let's now move to the discussion of indexes. This is a very, very important topic. Okay, this is a, a long series we're about to embark on. I have four back-to-back -back lectures just like this that we're going to cover here. Uh, we're going to get into some pretty detailed stuff. So let's just go ahead and jump in here. I would suggest, by the way, that you watch all four of these in one sitting if you possibly can. It just makes it easier. Some of you might find value in watching this multiple times, if, particularly if you're somewhat new in the SQL Server space. Now remember what we talked about a couple of videos back. We said that the whole purpose of an index is that it makes SQL Server get the data faster. We want to now dig in and understand why that works. And that's really what these four videos, this four lecture set is all about. Giving you the how it works part so that later on you can make smart decisions. This is the fundamentals of indexing. We're not going to cover anything groundbreaking at all here in these four videos. So if you know the basics of indexing, you, you may be able to skip a lot of this here. Uh, just be, uh, just kind of be mindful, look through a couple of them maybe and make sure. But this is really the fundamentals of indexing. If you get what I'm about to share with you here, it will make your performance tuning much easier. It will just make it click in your head. And that's really what you want. One day you just, bam, you just turns on and you get it. And that's what indexing that's what I'm going to show you here about indexing. So let's talk about the internals of SQL Server. Now we've probably, if you've been through some of my classes before, uh, you've heard me talk about pages, you might be familiar with pages. SQL Server stores all of the data in a database on internal structures called pages. Okay, now pages are an 8K structure. And we can talk about extents, which is a collection of eight pages, but I'm going to leave some of that stuff out. Right now is not that important. We'll talk about extents when we get into fragmentation and such a little bit later. And there's actually several types of pages. Right now, just for simplicity's sake, let's stick with the concept that there are data pages. When you add a row to a table, it gets placed on a data page because it's data, okay? All right, now let's also say we've got an 8K page size. If each row in a table is fixed at 1,000 bytes, that means we could store eight rows on a page. Okay, so that's what we mean when we're worried about page size and row size here. All right, so that means the more full your pages are and the more pages that you have, the larger your database is going to be, right? The more full pages you have, you're going to have a large database, okay? as well as the longer it's going to take you to get to specific rows. Okay, there's a simple analogy here. Imagine a telephone book of three pages, and you need to find Scott Wiggum, and it's sorted last name, comma, first name. It's going to take you, at most, three pages to get there, right? I mean, it's pretty fast. When we then have a 1,000 pages, it becomes a little more challenging, a little more time-consuming. That's all we're really talking about right there. Okay? Now, if we're dealing with a table with no indexes, none at all, okay, that means, theoretically, conceptually, that the rows on those data pages are stored in no particular order. Now they're fixed, they're not just randomly floating around and it moves and hops from page to page, they're fixed on those pages. But when did this row get written to this page versus that row? Okay. It's no particular order. Okay. Remember there is no order to the members of a set theoretically. Okay. Now, in reality, most likely case is that the rows are on the pages in the order they were added to the table. That's the most likely case. Right? Now I just did a quote here straight out of books online just to kind of hammer this home here. 
if you're dealing with a table with no indexes, we'll cover more about it later, just think about those rows as just being in no particular order. I don't want to say random order because there is a logic to how the rows are added onto the page. Okay. Now, here's my <laughs> take on what a table with no indexes is going to look like, right? You need to get to a piece of data. Let's say you have 500,000 rows in a table with no indexes and you need to find one of them. You might as well have said, hey man, I need you know, a file that has the, the letter Z, Q, and the number 457 on it. And you have to look through that stack on that desk. <laughs> it's going to take a long time. And you're probably going to have to look through every single piece of paper. Because, just because you found one, was that the only one? You don't know. So you'd have to go look. You'd have to look through every page to find a piece of paper that had, what was it, Z, Q, and three numbers, four, five, six, and whatever, okay? So that's rough. A table with no indexes. That's the picture I want you to visualize, okay? Here's the key takeaway from really this whole series. Okay? An index is a way to create organization within your data pages. That's the goal of it. How, why does SQL Server go faster, get to the data faster when there are indexes present? There's organization now. It has a defined path to follow. It has directions. It's kind of like an index in the back of a book. Okay. Now, I'm going to stop here soak that in, come back in the next video, let's introduce the concepts of clustered, non-clustered, and heaps.